Welcome to FM Evolution. I'm your host, Sean Black, and today I am on the interweb here <laughs> with Harold Miller. Hey, man, from Krieger, welcome to the show. What's up, man? Thanks hey. for having me. Oh, man, it was awesome to see you during Connects, Prism, now Connects. That's going to get some use in, getting used to there. But, uh, and then, um, you know, we got to uh, kind of talk a little bit about Carrigo. Then we had Jennifer Shonan. on. She was great. Yep. And, uh, but there was a lot of interest and we've had a lot of different platforms. And as you know, from this show, man, we love innovation. I love talking to everyone who's in this market space about innovation and you guys are your way up there. So I want to have you on, um, cause we had a lot of questions still. I tell you what, 15, 20 minutes is just not enough to cover Carrigo. There's a lot going right. on. <laughs> so for sure. So yeah. So thank you for joining us, man. Thanks, man. How was your weekend? What, what's going on new with you? Uh, not much, man. Just, uh, just actually come back from vacation. So just got a, an inbox full that I'm just sifting through, but, uh, that's, you know, yeah. that's kind of the thing when you go on vacation, it's great. When you come back, you're just buried. <laughs> I know. Right. It's like, why well, take a vacation? <laughs> <laughs> so man, I wanted to take a moment to kind of learn. I had a lot of, um, I had a lot of questions come up about Kriego after the fact, after the show. And, uh, so I promised viewers I'd get back and get some more answers and put them in the show notes. Um, so tell, first of all, for those who don't know Harold Miller, tell us a little bit about you guys, about you. About me. So, yeah. Um, so I'm Harold Miller. I've kind of been, uh, working in facilities for a number of years. I've, uh, actually kind of stumbled into the industry just by a job that was posted and uh, I was kind of ready to get out of what I was doing within my company. And, uh, they said, well, we've got this opening in facilities. And I said, you know what? I, I think I might want to try that. Um, so it sounds they, like uh, an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was one of these things where it was like, uh, I was, I was a, a call center manager for like the late shift, like from, it was, I don't know, it was like from three to mid or three to 2 AM or something like that. And so that was when the maintenance oh, usually happened. And, uh, yeah, so we, it was a call center. So uh, every minute of course was critical. And, yes. uh, and so what they did was they, did all their generator maintenance at night and uh, we'd actually had a facilities manager that stopped uh, quit a month ago and I guess nothing was being maintained. The, the, the stand-in facilities manager came in found that the generator was way out like there was the I guess the, the coolant crystallized in the cooling jackets oh, and no. it was overheating when they tried to test run it and so uh, I was just there working at night and they sent this uh, interim facility manager said hey we, we need to do some generator maintenance and uh, so they went out and they, um, they said that, you know, if, if they're, if they need any help, just let them know, let them in the building, whatever they need since I was a night manager. And, uh, yeah, they, they kind of came in and I was just, you know, it's like midnight, there's nothing going on. So yeah. I'm kind of a guys. car guy. I'm all about, you know, checking motors out and seeing yeah. a big old generator, but uh, it was pretty cool. I was talking to them and just understanding, you know, I've never seen what a, a generator looked like. I know what cars have you know, engines, I do rebuilds and all that stuff. So that's a lot of fun. So I was talking to them and just kind of getting the lowdown of what happened and um, I ended up at the end of the night, I sent a, a kind of a, a summary email to this, this facilities manager that was watching over uh, our building and uh, she replied back and said, wow, you want a job? <laughs> and <I> said, right? <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm kind well, of, you know, since you're asking, yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, I, I think that, you know, this is coming at a good time. So, uh, so sure, I'll throw my name, my name in the hat and, uh, and sure enough, it worked out. So that's kind of how I fell into facilities management. And I actually hear that a lot. I mean, from different people, different versions of that about kind of going and, you know, falling into this, this whole market of, of facility management. And it's, and it's actually, it takes a, a special kind of skill set. You know, you really definitely need to be detail oriented. You know, you have to have, you have to understand mechanically what's going on, but you, you also have that the people component, which is super important. Well, you right. have to be a good communicator. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's, that's part of the big part of the job is that, you know, you're constantly, you're either talking to site managers, you're talking to your clients. So yeah, I mean, for sure that the, that the totally agreed on that, that people component of it, you know, working with vendors, working with site managers, working with your client. Yep. Uh, so yeah, for sure would, would definitely agree. But, uh, but yeah, I always kind of make the joke, you know, nobody ever says that they want to grow up and be a facilities manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, some people, maybe they do, but you yeah, know, some I maybe some, maybe 
there's a lot of them that I meet that every facility manager meet. It's just like, yeah, you know, I just kind of got into this because of you know this or that. I really wasn't planning on it's just it. Just the right fit. Yeah. 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 I mean, there, and it and does take a special person. Like not everyone can do it. It's you, you really have, you, you kind of really do have the skills or you don't just a basic get, I mean, stuff getting in there. But uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of training and upkeep and, uh, you really got to keep on to learning in the marketplace as you go too. And it's not like there's a school for, Hey, for facility managers, you know, like, Hey, go learn. It's not, not quite like that. It's well, that's interesting. Cause I was just going to say that a couple of years back, I understood that there was a school. So I live in the Dallas area and there's a school, oh. uh, that's added. It's uh, just outside. I think it's in Arlington. But um, there's like, I think it's more of a a tech school, kind of community college, but they actually offer some uh, degree in facilities management. I stand corrected. Yeah. (laughs) There is a school for it. (laughs) Yeah. So well, I, I mean, did really know. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the industry is is obviously it's it's really it's really coming around. Um, yeah, and I think that you know, there's there's just a lot there's a need really I think for for some education around it. And I think that that's yeah, I agree. See that. Yeah. Um. So you know, a lot of the different organizations that we're a part of, I know you guys are there as well, including Connects. Now they have some pretty good educational components of the organizations. But yeah, I mean, this whole and, and one of the reasons I, I wanted to start this uh, FM Evolution podcast is because it is changing so quickly uh, and, yeah. and the whole industry, you know, is evolving. I wanted to kind of hear the creation of Kriga. We talked a little bit about, about it with Jennifer, but if you could talk to that, that'd be great. I'd love for people to kind of get a, a good idea of how you guys got started. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Krigo was kind of formed. It's it's definitely one of these tech companies that were founded out of a garage, you know, like Google and Apple mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so Krigo was actually it was it was a couple of guys, and they were in the Silicon Valley. Uh, and so really spawned out. It was uh, in the late nineties, I think it was nine, about 1998, uh, where these these gentlemen were were looking at, at creating some software that was really going to be primarily used for what at the time was just in multifamily housing. So more oh. like apartment complexes. Yeah. So that's what, kind of where it came from. Um, and so really it, it spun up into this technology uh, and then it just really grew from there. And so uh, there was a huge push from mobility. So it's interesting that when we, whenever I look back in the archives of our software mm-hmm. platform and the documentation, there's stuff in there about, you know, Blackberry. Um, and, oh uh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, had, right? I had so many blackberries i remember <laughs> think about a throwback yeah. i mean that was like that was our first app was it yeah. was a blackberry app and you know of course that doesn't exist anymore today it just shows how much technology changes but yep. i you love know, my blackberry man <laughs> we call yeah, them crackberries no, crackberry i was just gonna say that was like when i got my it was so cool just to you know, on my hip and it goes oh, off I had it. My, it was know. so fast man it was great i know yeah. it's the just imagine the, I was just like, oh, man, I'm so much more efficient. Now that I can, I can see my email immediately. When I get back to my desk, I'm, I'm not blindsided. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so, so be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now everything is smart. Now you're right? connected to everything, man. Yep. What an everything. amazing story. And talk about an evolution of our product. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and then even before BlackBerry, we were doing things over text message. And so, you know, got a work order, got a text on, on my phone, um, you know, back in you know, even the days of pagers, you know, the, the text, text pagers out there. So uh, really cool stuff. And, um, and just to see how the product has evolved. And now, of course, everything is Apple and Android, um, yep. really spurring a lot of the innovation there. GPS, check in, check out. Oh That's one of the, kind of a lot that goes around with, you know, having now the mobility and also having the data that, that backs up exactly what's happening for a technician or a provider. It's weird, man. We have people who working that, that work for us who have no idea what pagers are. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh yeah, man. They're in that age group. Like what was that? I'm like, Oh my gosh. It's yeah. nuts. But that's yeah. where we're going, you know, and, and I'm getting old. So <laughs> but, man, uh, what a great story. I, I want to kind of talk I want to have you talk a little bit about like kind of the key, um, the key components or key benefits of, of having Krigo. Obviously, you know, everyone at this point cannot track the amount of data that's coming in and out of the organization. It's just too much. But if you could speak to that a little bit, that'd be great. I'd love to hear you guys talk about that. 
Yeah, so, I mean, we've, early on, we've recognized that the power of, of a, a platform to, for facilities management, for property management, anything like that, uh, as, you're, as you're now collecting data, that data has value to it. And yep. so, um, being able to, to really apply that intelligence um, and really show whenever there's there's something that's going on. So, you know, the old days of, if we look back at the first first times where uh, facilities management where somebody had an issue, you know, there's a number on the outside of the bathroom or something that says, if you have an issue, call, call this, this number. number. Re- report, you know, this bathroom, yeah. B1, you know, men's south, whatever it is. Um, and so that was kind of the first generation facilities management and tracking. And usually that would be somebody and they would plug it into maybe a homegrown database or if, if they didn't have that, they just put it on the clipboard for the technician yep. to get. So you kind of start with that and then you start moving into you know, more computerized maintenance systems where now that information is being housed somewhere. We're probably still taking calls, um, but we are, we're capturing that and, and it's maybe an email that goes out to a technician. So kind of getting rid of getting rid of the clipboards, but we no still have a problem. Yeah, no you. clipboards. We've got to get those out. I believe you, you'll you'll be crying. We still have clients that actually <laughs> call uh, that, you know that, that want Carigo, and they still literally are doing things over clipboards. Um, it's it, it's out there. Yeah. So you get to the the part where we're we're now we're doing things electronically through email, but there's not really much tracking going on there. And so now we start getting into more things where we now are able to track things on a, a CMMS that is, is maybe logging time. A technician is logging into the CMMS and saying, okay, I started at this time and then I ended the job at this time. So we're kind of getting some of that entry in. And then you start getting into more of today's technology where things are happening in real time. And so that's where Corrigo is kind of, we try to set ourselves apart by looking at right. things ensuring that things are tracked in real time. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got, I've got a team of 50 technicians. I need to figure out what's going on with all of them. And maybe I just need to know what's going on. If, if there's a, an emergency, if there's really something that, that needs my attention. So one of the big things with Krigo is that it's always a, a management by exception. And so whenever we're displaying things in our dashboard uh, within our product or other, you know, other things that need to be called out when you're looking at a work order on the screen, is that it's going to show you whenever there's something that needs your attention. If it's just a work order that's kind of going through the process, you know, we get sent a work order out, the, uh, the, the provider picked it up, you know, on time, they, it's all flowing through, they completed it, it's ready to be invoiced, all that is happening seamlessly. There's not really a need for us to, to keep an eye on that. So Unless- I, have, I have clients that, that obviously that use you guys, right? Yeah. And for restaurants and different facility management. Um, but organizations, but I've seen your data flowing and uh, on dashboards mounted on monitors, you know, it's just, it's insane. It's the same awesome. amount of information. I'm like, holy. And they're like, check this out. Click, click, click. I'm like, Oh my God. They're really, really like drilling into the data. So that, I think it's amazing what you guys are doing, the amount of uh, different data points you're collecting. But like, as far as like, what really kind of sets you guys apart from other people? I mean, there's, it's a tough market. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I think everyone knows there's a lot of other people out there doing something similar to what Carigo does, but obviously you guys have been doing it for a long, long time and have a very large database or very established customer base. But what is, what are you guys working on now? That's going to like set you guys apart. Yeah, so really, really cool stuff. So we just had uh, our our Krigo Connect conference. Ah, uh, I know, yeah. I missed it. You missed it. I was oh, so bummed, man. It was it was awesome. And so we we completely changed the way that we do uh, conferences and and really any kind of conference. And this it was the way that we kind of did things through business intelligence and, and mm-hmm. analytics. Um, this is really this is where the product is going. And we, we kind of used that, that actual business intelligence to create this, this conference. Um, you know, it wasn't, yes. uh, it, it was, it was un- unlike anything. And even our service providers were just like, wow. Whoa. Um, so the, the big thing is, is that we showcase the technology. And so it's all about the data. Um, we looked at all the data that we have that's within our platform and we, 
look to see we have people that need service and we have people that provide service. Yep. So really tying those together and, and making it efficient. So one of the biggest things is that we didn't have a trade show floor. Like there was, there was, oh. there was food. yeah. So and that was kind of a, a different thing. You know, people weren't really sure. Well, how am I going to reach out to the my customers that yeah, I want? What am I doing? <laughs> All these crew and I, I need customers. I need sales. I need to talk to people. Well, instead, what we did was we used business intelligence and analytics to really drill into saying, well, you as a provider on our Carigo Pro network have indicated that you do this service in this market. I've got a requester here that also has locations in that market that does that kind of work. You know, they need roofing, they need plumbing, they need electrical. And we started looking at, at breaking that data down and nice. then matching folks. It was like, you're was, matchmakers. That's, that's right. It was, you know, it was almost like a, a speed dating, but it that was speed dating great. with match, match.com, right? It was like, you know, exactly. Take- I was going to say. <laughs> and oh, so but we literally, we literally had that. And so we were pairing and, you know, afterwards, these, these service providers were just coming up to me and saying like, wow, that was amazing. We've never had anything like that. We've never spoken to so many customers that actually wanted that needed to talk to us. Yeah, that's um, cool. So we yeah we gave them these books that showed them exactly how much, how well they were performing in in, in different areas, uh, what their SLA performance was, uh, <laughs> and then and yeah, so everyone felt that it was just incredible. We we can't wait to hold our next one. We normally do it every two years. Man, um, that's cool. You're like eHarmony for facilities. <laughs> 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 we are just matching your You're providers. matching, man. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What so a, what a cool so, innovation. So it's really cool. I mean that, and so that's where, you know, during our conference, we had a whole presentation that talked about where the technology is going. Yeah. So a lot of cool stuff, you know, we're talking about uh, intelligence. We're talking about artificial intelligence, you know, AIs. Oh, I was like, going to ask you about that. Yeah. So Can we talked a little bit about that. Do you guys talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. We, so, I mean, that was part of the, the presentation that we had yeah. was, was talking about how AI is going to transform the way that we do business. Uh, and so, you know, you have it where already today we have systems, you know, we have a building management system that can alert and you know, we, we do integrations and, you know, uh, it says wow. there's a chiller alarm and that, you know, kicks off a work order to a technician. Right. But you start getting into more things like business, you know, artificial intelligence that, that now ends up saying, well, before that alarm kicks off, I might even know that there's going to be an alarm that comes up because maybe I'm using all these other data points to tell me, you know, yep. that, so, you know, I can tell, I can, you know, the, the technology starts to map out all these things that say Gosh. this, these, these are all points to say that there's going to be a failure. Let's, let's start to proactively look at stuff before, before it, it even happens. Fails. Yeah. So oh that's where, you yeah, know, getting you know, things like, you know, they, they call it the, um, the, the IOT world. Uh, where everything is, is is talking to each other. And that's where we're seeing more and more of. We're seeing automation systems that are, are, are talking to other automation systems and, and and really even now taking crowdsourcing. There's a, one of our clients is using an app where they indicate, you know, a person in a building says, I'm hot. And then somebody else in the area also says, I'm hot. And what do you know? The app even triangulates your location to know yeah, where you are in the building. And if it sees so many people saying I'm hot, then the system, the BMF starts to kind of like it either, it either tries to adjust the set point to say, well, let's cool it down. If we're still getting complaints, then it kicks off these work orders. So that's kind of where, you know, we're, we're seeing more of the technology. We're empowering the folks that instead of you know picking up the phone and calling the call center, they're opening an app. The app is triangulating their location in a building based off of Wi-Fi access points. And it says, Oh, well, you're in conference room number 204. And you know, right? I, I know, I can hear exactly. it knows exactly where you are. So you don't even have to tell it where you are. You just say, oh okay, uh, open the app and say, I'm hot. And it's like, okay, we got it. <laughs> what? That's, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't know if I to be really excited or really scared. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. I think I'm voting for excited because that's me. I love innovation, but man. Yeah. But yeah, so now we're seeing a whole new market that's developing where, because, you know, even in home automation, so I'm big into home automation. Obviously, I work in yep. IT. My whole house is automated. I've got, you know, cameras. I've got, you know, the thermostats. I've got switches and stuff. I'm on my way, man. I've got switches. I've got, <laughs> you know, i got Alexa's everywhere for me. She's right, like, that's my thing. She's We've got Alexa's house, like all man. over, all over the house. We've even got it where you can do like an intercom where you say, you know, drop in on Emily's. Oh, I love that. I'm always doing yeah. that with my kids. Yep. 
they're instead of yelling at them. But now they've even got the ones where they get the a screen and a camera built into the Alexa. So I the know. Echo Show. So yep. those are pretty cool. But obviously with all that home automation, you've got all these different apps. Like, okay, here's my app for my thermostat. Here's my app for yeah. my Alexa. Here's the switches. And so we're seeing this whole industry of developing an FM where you have these folks that are trying to create what you can refer to as an omni app, a single app that does everything. Are you guys looking to be that hub to be that communicator? We're working with a lot of those providers. Mm. Um, and so we, we know that we're kind of a, a part that's in the overall FM toolbox. Yep. Uh, and so we're working to make the platform, you know, we have an API right now with Corrigo that can talk to really almost anything else that's out there that can also use an API. Yep. So we're really, we're working very closely with those providers. Um, and so, you know, trying to, to see who's going to come out up front. Um, you know, we, we pride ourselves on, on creating a, a fantastic facility management technology. Um, there's other components that are outside of facilities management, catering and all these types of things that we're not, that's not really what we're getting into. Thing, so yeah. It, enabling the platform to still talk to those, you know, those app developers and so that they can create their own apps that look really, really sleek, really sexy. Um, that, that is where we'll, we'll just ensure that the platform is, is capable of, of getting of working with them. Yeah. Stay in your lane, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, man. That's, that's what it is. No, but I mean, there's, there's something very, um, you're speaking truth to that. I think you guys, should really focus on what you're amazing at. But there's so much to be able to integrate with now. It's, I don't know. It's yeah. crazy. I know. Yeah, um, I mean, we get questions ahead. all the time. Like does, you know, does our product integrate with this or have we done an integration with that? And really the answer is always, well, here's the API. Here's all the things you can do. I mean, if your other software can, can talk to us, then yeah, yes. we're, we're totally good with that. And so wow, it, it's, it's become less of a question of can we integrate uh, on the Krigo side and more of, well, what's on your side? Because we've seen, we've seen some really, really nice pieces of technology that want to get integrated with Krigo. Yeah. We've seen some really old stuff. I think there was even a, a system that was like still running on like uh, an old IBM AS400 type system. And they were like, or it was like an accounting system. And I was like, well, can you integrate with Craig? And I said, oh, well, you got more, you got bigger issues here. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you better, oh, wow. you better check. Yeah. I don't sure. know about all that. But uh, yeah, so there, and there's different ways. Even with that though, there's like, if you can create a, a middleware, which is frequently gets used whenever we're yeah. talking, two systems are talking together, then that's I always. Can, I could geek out on this all day long. Like, <laughs> 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 I really could, man. There's so much going on with, um, AI and tech now and, and different platforms. And, and I think everyone is going, <clears throat> how do I go and use the technology and go to the next level now? Right. I think really yeah, and that's, looking at that. That's where Krigo is really, you know, we're trying to say, well, there's, there's plumbers, there's roofers, there's, there's all these maintenance contractors and all these markets that of course would be happy to do yeah. service for you, but where are they going to be set apart? And so that's why in Corrigo we have the ability to, we track things like, your ratings, you know, we have a system where somebody, when a work order is completed, the person that requests the work gets an email and gets to say, you know, yeah, it was good or yeah, yeah. no, it wasn't good. or, And that goes against the provider's ratings. And so being able to, to kind of now create the, the, the kind of competition that you need in order to live score really grow. Card, yeah, yeah. And so that's, that's one of the big things is that we are looking at, at having that data, that feedback data in Creo. And also, you know, what, what are we, what is that provider charging you in that, that market? You know, do we have another provider that could be better for you because, you know, they're, they're more competitive in that area. Wow. Um, able to get that data and analytics of, out of the platform is, is another offering that we have. That's amazing. What a, what a, what a tool for people who are using it for facility managers. I mean, you guys are making it. I, I can't say their job is easy. It is not. It is not easy at all. <laughs> so I used to be a facility manager, so I know what yeah. it's like. I've You're right. No, sides. like yeah. I'm good. You keep that job, man. I'll stay on my side <laughs> of this. It is not easy at all, but uh, what an awesome tool. What, um, obviously with that, I mean, do you guys offer like training? Like how do the heck there's so much stuff going on? How do you keep people up to date? Yeah. So Corrigo is a platform where it's not necessarily something where you, you, we kind of deliver it and you open the box and you just 
run. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do within Carigo. So there's there is some there's a deployment process, and so whenever we deploy our product, we sit down with our customers and we understand what's what is it that they're doing with the product, how much you know, what is it, what do you what do your locations look like, what are you tracking, and then we start to kind of build the product according to their needs. And and so it's not where we pigeonhole everybody into saying Super that well you're going to use Carigo yeah. like this. Yeah, because we have a lot of folks that use Creo for different reasons. Yeah, when I was so, talking to Jennifer, that's one of the things we kind of covered is we talked about how it's so customizable. And, you know, she was really talking about being a community-based software. And we we talked about having all those people influence how their software works, which is pretty amazing to me. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, that is, it's it's one of the things that, you know, the, I actually got in trouble when I first started working for Krigo saying that, yeah, our, our software is customizable. And uh, I got told that, well, it's configurable. And it, it Dude, truly wow, is. Okay. Yeah. So whenever we can configure the system to really to custom match what the needs are of our customers, that's where Krigo really shines. I mean, we've seen some really complex things where we have your typical kind of corporate clients that have a number of locations. We've had clients that are in retail, that are in restaurants, um, that that in, even in retail, we have uh, a, a customer that we just deployed that's even doing things where they're integrating things within HR with Carigo. And so it's not just, you know, a system where we're getting a work order, we we send it to a technician, it gets done and completed, and that's and that's it. Uh, there's there's much more that, that our customers are doing with our product. Um, there's even, an, we used to have a customer that uh, did, uh, you know, that in airports, you've got somebody that, that goes to a jetway with a wheelchair. Um, what? Yeah, we've seen people use uh, Krigo for that purpose. Um, deploy, they like the deploy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like gate eight twelve, you know, go. What the heck? That's a me. Uh, yeah. First of all, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, so I mean, that's where we are right now, right? That is yeah. what. And I think being in the business you are, which is serving other people, you got to learn how to grow and adapt, and being able to flex those, you know, IT muscles and go. All right, you want to do that? Let's do it. Let's see how we yeah. can configure that data. I mean, in the end of the day, that's what it is. It's just data and, and moving it around from one place to another. That sounds really easy. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> but it. Uh, but you guys do a really amazing job. Um, obviously, we talked about AI, and that scared the crap out of me. But um, but any advancements for the future, Krieger? What do you see? Yeah, I mean, really, it's going to be around the the data. So you know the the. At one time, it was more like make a product that somebody can use, make it easy to use, and then you know we'll we'll sell it based off of that. People will rave about how great that that Krigo is right. to use. Well, yep. now it's going to be the 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 whole the differentiator is going to be what can you do with that data? What can you do with it in an aggregate form where you're looking at you know Krigo and maybe all of our customers? You know, what's the average that that if somebody pays in the Dallas market for a plumber with all of our, our you know, all the providers that are on our network yeah. versus the ones that, you know, I just want to see the data from my own instance. So, and that's, you know, there was a time where, yes, you could easily do that from within your own instance if you could crunch mm -hmm. it enough, but then being able to to take that data and start you know, looking at it from an aggregate level, from, from a national and global, uh, we're seeing a lot of globalization. You know, that's, that's another thing with our product is that we, We've we've now incorporated so many. I think that you know we're we're in something like, um, I think the last count I saw, well the the account that I just deployed was 50 countries, uh, and there was about 14 languages. Yeah, so that's another thing is that being able to take that that data now and that you know we're expanding from a national level to a global level. Somehow putting that all together is is going to be critical, and so I think that we are. We've made some incredible strides with it. Um, we, Sounds easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, tell I you, know. I've, That's, I've had to learn Chinese and Hebrew and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> but, I don't uh, even but, want to think about it. My head hurts just thinking about all that. So, That's so, amazing, yeah, man. So I, I want to wrap up with, I want to kind of learn a little bit more about um, how customers typically find you guys. I mean, obviously you can go on Google and boom, Korea, right? But right. what's the best way to to kind of onboard with you guys? What's what, what do what do we do? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so Krigo, we are on all social media platforms. Uh, if you want to learn more about Krigo, even if you're Facebook, Twitter, 
uh, all of that, you know, LinkedIn, we, we're definitely there. We post a lot of information. So if you want to learn more about the product, uh, we post up uh, different things like our case studies, um, the features that we have in our product, uh, all that is posted really on, on the social media platforms. If that's not your thing and you just really kind of want to, to go directly into you know, Krigo.com, learning more about the product there, reading the case wow. studies and all the information is all posted there at Krigo.com. Uh, there is a form where if you want to uh, contact us, it'll be routed directly to our sales and marketing team. Uh, I've seen those emails come across my desk because it's normally because they want to see a demo. Yep. And they're like, Harold, can you do this demo? And I'm like, yeah, sure. sure. Um, but we would love to show anybody that's interested, um, you know, even if they've seen our, our product before, um, if they've not seen our product in the last probably, you know, I would say, year, um, we've made some incredible strides. We've made some some huge innovation uh, and we're continuing to innovate on the product. So if you haven't spoken to us recently, for sure, get back in touch with us. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to show you what the product can do for you. An amazing product. I'm, ex- I'm, I'm, I don't even know where to start from, where to go from here. I mean, I think I could talk to you probably for another hour <laughs> just <laughs> on what to do with this thing. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have that time. I'm going to wrap up with you a bit and just say thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for taking time. Uh, it was awesome to see you at Connects. Um, uh, you know, we're already halfway through the year. It's going to be coming up again, like in a blink of a, an eye. So yeah, no kidding. we'll see you there. And I'm sure we'll see you at Rhythma too. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good, man. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you for joining the show. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cool, man. Thanks a lot.